Hi, I'm Phil Webb, Principal Consultant with Select Business Solutions. This module on developing the UML behavioural model describes how we further develop the model that we've created from a static view of a system into a rich and dynamic model that shows interactions between the users and the system. We created a model that took a static black box view of the system. The user does something to the system and the system does it. But we have no idea of how the system does it, whatever it is, but we assume that it does. We also have no concept of the ordering or sequence of activities. We've not defined what the user should do if X happens instead of Y. The rich picture is a hierarchical composition of the system, the enterprise and the universe. The use cases define the system boundary by defining a black box system interface to the system actors. The white box inner system details are represented within the, three, within the system by three models. The use case model shows what activities users are able to do with the computer system, but it does not specify the order in which the activities can occur. Interaction modeling State modelling and activity modelling are used to capture the dynamic semantics of the system. Static semantics are captured by class models. Most analysts and developers are familiar, or should be, with the class diagrams and class modelling. The class model shows the attributes and methods of objects and classes, but it does not show how these objects and classes interact with each other. For more information on this static modelling, you should view the UML Information Structure module. The behavioural model in UML builds upon the static view of the system, created in the use case model and the class model. The dynamic semantics of the system are captured by the interaction model. The interaction model in UML2 now consists of four diagrams. Firstly, the sequence diagram. The sequence diagram is especially useful for developing scenarios in the model. The what if something happens? How do we react to it? Secondly, the collaboration diagram deals with interactions between users and instances of classes. New to UML2, the interaction overview diagrams are a variant of activity diagram that allows the user to put other interaction diagrams into frames. The interaction overview diagram, as the name suggests, allows a user to create a diagram that gives an overall view of the flow of control within a system. Another new interaction diagram for UML2 is the timing diagram. The timing diagram allows the developer to lay out the behaviour of one or more objects throughout its lifetime on a timeline. State models capture aspects of dynamic semantics on internal system behaviour that are confined to the dynamics of an instance of a class, typically, a use case or a system, less typically. Activity diagrams also capture dynamic semantics of internal system behaviour but focus on activities rather than states. Activity diagrams are confined to the activities of a use case or component or operation. Use cases show the ways in which each actor is able to use the system. Actors are represented by stick figures and the use cases by the oval shaped nodes. Although often used in requirements capture and analysis, use cases are often used as the basis for interaction diagrams. Indeed within Select Architect, our UML modelling tool, Use cases can be associated with any number of interaction diagrams. UML supports four notations for interaction modelling. Firstly, the sequence and collaboration diagrams. Sequence diagrams were used by several OO notations, including OMT, and have been adopted by the Object Management Group for use in unified modelling language modelling. In addition, Two new diagrams have been adopted by the OMG for UML2, the interaction overview diagrams and timing diagrams. The object sequence diagram represents a graphic description of a use case. It's used to show the interactions which occur between the objects, user and business, and the use case. 
This sequence diagram example shows a scenario for a video rental. Notice that Select Architect also builds up a textual description of the scenario in Program Description Language, or PDL, on the left-hand side. This can be a useful starting point for the code. An object collaboration diagram models the structural dimension of a use case scenario by graphically illustrating the interactions between actors and instances of classes. Object collaboration diagrams provide alternative representations of an object sequence diagram, each one modeling a different execution thread or scenario through a use case by showing the flow or sequence of messages between associated objects. It's possible to have multiple object collaboration diagrams for a single use case. Interaction overview diagrams provide a high-level view through your application's execution path. Interaction overview diagrams are essentially a variant of the activity diagram that allows the user to place other interaction diagrams into frames. The frames are then connected. The frames replace the nodes from activity diagrams and are connected with flows and decision diamonds as necessary. Interaction overview diagrams are not currently supported in Select Architect. This is a mock-up of what one would look like with our sequence and object collaboration diagrams. Timing diagrams are a form of sequence diagrams whose emphasis is upon the behaviour of objects over a period of time. A major difference between sequence diagrams and timing diagrams is that the time axis is horizontal in timing diagrams. Timing diagrams allow an object's life to be timed, along with responses and wait time, and are especially useful for real-time systems or where time is a cri critical factor. State diagrams are based on the state charts of David Harrell, with minor changes and extensions to support new OO concepts. The dynamic model is developed at the feasibility analysis stage of the select perspective process. It consists of a set of state diagrams, basically one for each class exhibiting significant behaviour. The actions and activities on the state diagram relate to operations on classes within the object model. This is a particularly rich form of state diagram with the ability to model states and transitions, events, actions, activities, child states and concurrent states. Activity diagrams are based on a number of workflow-oriented approaches. The most immediate, immediate ancestor is Jim O'Dell's event diagrams, described in Object-Oriented Methods, a foundation, by James Martin and James O'Dell. This further development of the system model will also allow us to better understand the system, its interactions with the users and with other systems, and also allows us to feed back improvements into our existing static models. It therefore becomes a recursive development of the model. By developing the dynamic and behavioural model, it allows us to better understand the static view of the system. It can also allow us to improve areas that were ill-defined or poorly understood. It may also allow us to find out things about the system that were, in, that were completely unexpected, or things that had not been expected. We'll now look at behavioural modelling in further detail and its relationship to other areas of the UML model and expand upon those areas such as interaction modelling, state modelling and activity modelling touched upon in this introduction in more detail. <laughs>